What's going on, people? So, I recently got into playing the Total War Warhammer games. I got them all on sale during Steam's, like, summer sale. And it has triggered in me this huge desire to kind of get into, like, fantas the fantasy side of Warhammer. I've been into Warhammer 40,000, uh, a fan of the universe and the story and the setting and the characters since I was 15. I'm 32. Uh, and I played the tabletop game now for, like, the past year and a half so heavily invested in warhammer 40,000. never really cared about the fantasy side of things but i've always loved the total war franchise and it was warhammer total war warhammer even though it was fantasy i'm like i know i'm probably gonna love this and i do so i've been really considering getting into the fantasy side of warhammer however upon looking into it I have decided to play neither Warhammer the Old World nor Age of Sigmar. And here's why. So, a little bit of backstory for people who don't know. This is for people, like, the, the title of this video is like Age of Sigmar versus Warhammer Fantasy slash the Old World. Um, why they both suck. A um, little bit of hi little history lesson of what I've learned through looking into this stuff. So Warhammer Fantasy Battle was the original Warhammer tabletop war game. It was the first one. The the name Warhammer comes from the fact that like the main human protagonist character wielded this magical warhammer called Galmaraz and that's the Warhammer that the franchise is named after. Um in the, the original game, Warhammer Fantasy Battle, it started off as a rank-and-flank game where you had to have your units in a specific square or rectangular formation. They had to pivot. The way that they were facing other units mattered, and they had to maintain this formation. It was a much more tedious game i feel like based on like the research i've done i know there are a lot of people out there who really love it but not for me and apparently it wasn't for a lot of people because it went on for like 30 years but of in the year 2015 they decided to formally do away with it and replace it with this new game called age of sigmar and what led to this was eventually down the line Games Workshop created, they were like, we have a fantasy style game called, you know, Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Why don't we do a spacey sci-fi space opera style game? Call it Warhammer 40,000 because it takes place in the 41st millennium. Uh, and that's how Warhammer 40,000 got started. But with Warhammer 40,000, since it was much more like, don't, don't get me wrong, there are still like characters in and units in warhammer 40,000 that use like swords and shields and axes and magic and stuff but there's also a lot greater emphasis on like tanks and care units where characters are have like assault rifles and shit and laser guns and whatnot and so for that style of game they were like rank and flanks not going to work here and that's where they came up with the more like squad based just unit coherency game where it's like they don't have to be in a particular formation. They all just have to be in unit coherency with two inches away from each other horizontally and all, uh, you know, whatever the fucking rules are for unit coherency. And they put them on circular bases as opposed to square bases because the, the fantasy models were made on square. They they meant to be put on square bases so you could better keep them in that like square or rectangular formation. Uh, and Warhammer 40,000, when they launched it, took off to the moon it took off it sold like hotcakes people really thought it was cool they thought the idea of it was cool at first it was a, this big like parody of like things like dune and starship troopers and all that and people just people loved it they ate it right up and as the years went on games workshop started to be like you know what warhammer fantasy battle it's not selling the way 40k is selling and the reason for that is because they were not really giving Warhammer Fantasy Battle any... They weren't giving it enough new shit in the way of, like, models, miniatures, for people to really want to invest in and buy. All their effort was going towards Warhammer 40k, because it was, it was the fucking new hotness. And so, finally, that and people liked the game 
better. I do feel like the squad based uh, squad based unit coherency based gameplay was more appealing to people than the rank and flank. It, it spoke to a wider audience. Um, so it, Warhammer 40k just had everything going for it and they were just kind of like fantasy's just not selling. So then they had the bright idea of why don't we kind of shake the etch a sketch on the fantasy side of things and a little bit and kind of go back to the drawing board and what if we kind of like redid the fantasy side of things what if we what if we came up with a a fantasy tabletop war game rule set much more similar to what we have going on over in 40k and everybody was like fuck yeah that's awesome and then they thought on top of that why don't we make some new models you know, people are tired of these old ass 30 year old models. Let's make some new models that, that that are sculpted really well and look cool. And the company was like, fuck, yeah, this is a great idea. That's exactly what we need. And then someone chimed in and went with, hey, since we're completely overhauling the rules and changing the fuck out of them. And since we're going to completely overhaul the miniatures line and change the fuck out of it. Why don't we just completely overhaul the universe and the setting and the characters and the lore? And they did that. And they basically wrote a story arc in Warhammer Fantasy Battle called The End Times, in which chaos wins and destroys the world, and it all culminates with the humans god Sigmar hurtling through space and carrying what's left of I'm I'm doing my best to explain this cuz it's honestly a bunch of shit. Uh he's carrying with him the remnants of his people from the old world and he's just hurtling through the void in in the wake of the old world's destruction and he's rescued by a cosmic space celestial dragon and they use some magic to create eight new planets, right? the mortal realms and that's and then that's where the age of sigmar lore takes off of from so yeah in other words like for some visual aids here this is the old world it was all your typical fantasy races you know humans elves dark elves dwarves orcs vampires there's a lot of shit all everything you could expect was there and uh it was all in one world. It was all contained to one world, one planet, and it was all these factions fighting for control of that planet. This, and it, there was 30 years of lore in this world. And then they switched it to the mortal realms, which is basically like eight different planets, each that are, you know, have their own uniqueness to them. And they are connected by these things called realm gates. Uh, it, 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 it became less The Witcher and much more World of Warcraft. But the model range also changed a lot. Like, if we take a look here, the, the faction that I would play if I play Age of Sigmar would be the Cities of Sigmar. And, like, these models are beautiful. Like, these individual characters are kind of cool here. Like, these Witch Hunter, this Witch Hunter team. But, like, the Steam Tank, that's an older model. What's something new? Where's like, like these guys, the Free Guild Marshal and Relic Envoy. That looks cool. The, this is a centerpiece, even though it's not that big of a model. The Free Guild Cavalier Marshal. That is um, that is awesome looking. That looks sick. What else we got here? Free Guild Cavalier Marshal, uh, Talia Vedra, Lioness of the Parch. I don't really care about her. The the Iron Weld Great Cannon looks cool. The Free Guild Steel Helms look cool. The new model range that they came up with was actually pretty impressive. And it's more than just this faction. Like, across the board, they're pretty cool. They also did come up with, like, a... Uh, let's look here at the factions. They came up with a fantasy version of Space Marines called the Stormcast Eternals. Uh, they thought that, like, having a Space Marine-type faction would also help the game sell. And I guess it did but i don't know it doesn't really speak to me they they're not they're not space marines it's not the same thing like i don't know 
but they do they are well sculpted and they are really cool looking you know so the model range update you know new new models with better sculpts great idea uh, revi revising the rules even even better idea also even better idea they went to a that squad based unit coherency style gameplay they got rid of rank and flank and it it was all very good what really kills it for me though and for a lot of people though was yes the gameplay needed an update yes the models needed updates the lore and the universe and the setting did not need an update people were heavily invested in this world the goings on of this world the characters in this world it did that did not need an update now we're almost 10 years into age of sigmar existing and people by and large have at this point mostly just kind of accepted it and i was kind of on the verge of doing the same thing and being like i'm gonna try getting into age of sigmar even though I prefer the setting and world and lore of the old world more than Age of Sigmar, I was going to just suck it up and go with Age of Sigmar. But, and, and the main reason for that was because, one, like I said, yes, the models looked way cooler for Age of Sigmar. And two, I, I already said as well, I'm never going to do rank and flank. And that's what old world is. It's rank and flank. I'm never going to do that style of wargaming. I, I have zero interest in it at all. So I was like, damn. But then I remembered something that I had come across back in like April, March, April, called One Page Rules. And I have a video about them on my channel talking about how they kick the ever-living shit out of Games Workshop. One Page Rules makes model agnostic tabletop war game rules and what that means is like if you have a army from age of sigmar or warhammer fantasy warhammer the old world or warhammer 40k or if you have kill teams from warhammer 40k kill team or if you have i don't know what they're called for war cry but if you have little teams for war cry they have rules to use the models you already have from Games Workshop to play a better rule set for a better game. It's model agnostic. It means you can use what you've already got. And they have a free army builder, uh, army list builder uh, built into the web browser. And then they also, if you subscribe to them on Patreon, it's like five bucks a month. You get you get the access to the, the army builder app. Um, it's a good deal. So once I remembered that, I started looking into it. And I had looked into their one-page rules. I had looked into their Warhammer 40K equivalent game, which they call Grimdark Future. I had never looked into their Age of Sigmar equivalent game, which is um, Age of Fantasy. But, I mean, in terms of rule differences between their Warhammer 40K style game and their Age of Sigmar style game... It's basically the same rules. It's called one-page rules for a reason. It's because, it, while not exactly only one page long, it's more like 11 to 15 pages long, it's still a much, much easier to understand, comprehend, absorb rule set than what Games Workshop offers with their games. So I started looking into their fantasy one. I read the rules for it, the one-page rules for their fantasy game, and I was like, you know what? I'm... First of all, the models for the old world or Warhammer Fantasy Battle suck. They're outdated as shit. I know there's a lot of people out there who find them and think they look charming, but I think they look like ass. So I'm going to just play with proxies. I will go on Etsy, or maybe I'll even just use some of the uh, models that One Page Rules sells. And I will build myself a Warhammer Old World style human empire army using proxies. And then I will play using their Age of Fantasy, one page rules, Age of Fantasy rules. My head canon will be that it is, I'm playing in the world of Warhammer, the old world. I'm just using a better set of rules and cooler looking models. So, yeah. In terms of, like I said, this video, uh, Age of Sigmar versus the old world, why they both suck. Age of Sigmar sucks because if you're just getting into it now, you're probably not going to think it sucks. But like once I, I personally, I this is how I feel about it. And I think 
most people are probably going to agree with me. Um, the story that you would find in like Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings or The Witcher is way better than something that you would find in like World of Warcraft or Magic the Gathering. It's just better. That's the difference between the story and the lore and the setting of Old World, Warhammer Old World versus Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Age of Sigmar is like World of Warcraft, Magic the Gathering, with the realms and shit. And then Old World is more like Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones. It's, it's all on one planet, divided between the factions. It's much more like, it's, it's much more centralized. Um, and that's why Age of Sigmar sucks is because they just, they took it too far. They destroyed, they destroyed and got rid of that world in that setting. Now I know that they have just recently brought back the old world as a game that they're actually selling. Games Workshop is selling Warhammer, the old world. It's essentially Warhammer fantasy battle. It's back. The re the old school rank and flank game is back. But that right there tells you the other problem why that sucks. It sucks because it's rank and flank, and it sucks because the models are old and look like shit. So they both suck. Age of Sigmar sucks because its setting and lore and universe are not as cool. And Old World sucks because the gameplay is rank and flank, and the models are outdated and look like ass. So they both suck. So that's, that's my opinion on it take that for what you will if anyone down below wants to shit all over me in my opinion that's totally fine you can leave a comment doing that but as far as i'm concerned anybody out there who's looking to get into tabletop wargaming and you're more fantasy inclined than sci-fi space opera inclined do not pick up war cry from games of workshop games of workshop do not pick up war cry from games workshop do not pick up age of sigmar from games workshop do not pick up the old world from Games Workshop. Just get yourself some minis from I mean if you want to use Games Workshop minis go ahead. Like I would I would just proxy. I would buy from one page rules or buy off Etsy. Get yourself some minis, get yourself a miniature an army of miniatures, download the one page rules for Age of Fantasy <coughs> and start rolling dice. That's what I would do. You can always head cannon that you're playing in whatever universe and world and setting you want. But when it comes to rules, one page rules is the way to go. So that's my take on that. Let me know what you guys think. Leave some comments down below. Get a discussion started. If you like this video, please hit that like button. It really helps out my channel. If you want to help out this channel and even further, you can check out some of my other videos and maybe subscribe. But other than that, I'll talk to you guys later.